Good morning. morning. The servant of the Lord. Listen to me, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my birth, he has made mention of my name. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant. Israel, in whom I will display my splendor. But I said, I've labored in vain. I've spent my strength for nothing at all. Yet what is due me is the Lord's, in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and gather Israel to himself. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength. He says, It is too small a thing for you to be my servant to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. This is what the Lord says, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, to him who is, was despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of the rulers. Kings will see you and stand up. Princes will see and bow down, because the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. Amen. Please join me on page 774 for Psalm 40, verses 1 through 11. Page 774. I waited patiently for the Lord, who inclined to me and heard my cry. The Lord drew me up from the desolate pit out of the miry bog, set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. The Lord put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our Lord. Many will see and be in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. O Lord, my God, you have multiplied your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. No one can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than that can be outnumbered. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, Lo, I come. In the roll of the brook it is written of me, I will delight of your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Lo, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hid your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and faithfulness from the great congregation. O Lord, do not withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and faithfulness ever preserve me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. And he loves us. We didn't earn it. We don't deserve it, but he loves us anyway. This morning for announcements, this afternoon at 5 p.m. is the now committee meeting, and at 5.30 is the board meeting. The Mountain Mission, the Methodist Mountain, Mountain Mission Truck will be here Wednesday this week, and there's an insert in your bulletin of some of the items that they really, really need. The Winter Mission Celebration Offering we gave last Sunday, and if you didn't have a chance, you can give today. And it lists our uh, local lane of giving Judy's Place and UMCOR Advanced Projects. National Lane was the Redbird Clinic Community Health. And International Lane was the Congo Restoration. Next Sunday, we'll give you an offering total. Our altar flowers this morning are given to honor and thank all those in our congregation that inspire and bless our hearts by their musical talents. If you've not signed up for flowers, 
please remember to do so today. There's a list out on the bulletin board. Surprise someone and make them feel special. Other January activities on the 26th at 2.30 p.m., all PPR committee members are going to meet with the district superintendent, Reverend Brad Smart, at the Pikeville UMC. And on the 26th also at 3 p.m. is the Cedar Creek Assisted Living Facility Worship Service. Any other announcements? If not, we'll ask our pastor to come lead us in prayer. Any unspoken requests today? God sees your hand, knows the needs that it represents. Um, a lot of things to pray about today has already been mentioned. Uh, this is, um, of course, we're uh, getting ready to celebrate this week Martin Luther King Jr. Birth, uh, birthday, and, and it's a celebration that uh, they usually meet and do a little bit of a ceremony in, at the park. And... Uh, They'll be doing that again this year, and I'm not sure of the meeting place this year. I'm thinking it's... Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's at the parking garage. That's right. I think it's parking at the parking garage. garage. And then I think we're going to walk over to the uh, Pikeville United Methodist Church. Okay, and that's always a, a, good, uh, a good ceremony. And usually they have a fellow that comes and, and uh, re... He does a version of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, and it's spot on he does a good job with that so if you get a chance it'd be a wonderful and we we're thankful today for for people who uh who bring things to our attention and you know uh, we think about our country and and sometimes we, we we look at our past and we have some things in the past that hasn't always been you know portrayed correctly in history and that's one of them perhaps and uh our treatment of, of the Native Americans and those things are not something that uh, are good to, to, to that we're proud about. Uh, thankfully, there's been some corrections, but still a long ways from that. So today, as we think about that, I want us to think about all those that are marginalized, that are oppressed. That includes people with special needs, people that we often overlook, mistreat, uh, bully in schools and those things. Uh, we want to think about all those people. And also, this is Sanctity of Life Sunday. It's a time when we recognize and realize the preciousness, the precious gift that God gives us, the gift of life. In Isaiah 40, I believe, uh, he said I, I was uh, that you knew me before I was born, while I was in my mother's womb. And you think about that. The Bible talks about us, uh, have God's foreknowledge of us in the sense that, that God knew us before we were born. And I think just as a mother may have uh, some relationship with, with a baby in the womb, so does God. And I think he, God cares about each and every one of those. And uh, we're thankful for organizations like the uh, Pregnancy Care Center. And they're coming upon the time for their banquet uh, in February. We'll be talking about that, and we support that. And uh, we're thankful. Uh, but at the same time, we realize that there's people that uh, have made choices that they didn't want to make, and we want to pray for them. Uh, we don't want to... Uh, cause anyone to to feel like the church is against them I, I believe we want to pray for them uh, as well so a lot to pray about today let's go to the Lord Lord as we come before you Lord, we're reminded that, God, that there are some things that we don't have control over. And there are some things that are bigger than us. And sometimes, Lord, it seems overwhelming. But, Lord, we bring these things to you because we know that you are in control. 
We don't see the future. We don't have a crystal ball. And we don't know what tomorrow holds. But God, we know that you hold tomorrow. And we hear of wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, destruction and violence, chaos. And we're reminded, Lord, that these things were prophesied. You talked about these kind of things, Lord, even with the disciples. And so, Lord, we bring these to you and ask you, God, to help. And those things that we can't change, Lord, we put in your hands. And, Lord, we want to pray for those in our congregation that are struggling. We, we continue to pray today for Matt as he has surgery. God, I pray that you would guide the doctors. You know, pray for a, a speedy recovery, Lord. I pray for the caregivers. I pray for the caregivers everywhere, Lord, for the hands that you would bless and the hearts that you would mend. And I pray, Father, for those in our congregation, Lord, that have lost loved ones. And God, those that are struggling, whatever struggle that may be, whatever form of oppression they may face. We're reminded, Lord, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And we give you praise today for those answered prayers, the ones that uh, you have brought about, Lord, by your own hand and those that you've worked through others, maybe doctors, the hospitals, because we know, God, that you work through them as well. We give you praise for all these things, and we pray as you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Anybody have a praise? I know we got a couple I want to mention, and, and uh, you know, we, there may be others. Um, Melinda, well, congratulations. She uh, has taken a job with West Care. I'm thank, thankful, Lord. Let's give God a hand for that. Uh, William? And William and the academic team. Uh, Beth, you want to sh uh, share that up? Uh, the fifth grade ball team is advancing to regional. All right. Good. And we want to congratulate Archer uh, on getting uh, a ram. Did you get a ram, Archer? Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Congratulations. Good job. Great. Evan has Have any others back here? Whoa, all right. All right. Well, and he's not here, but Daniel, I shared it on Facebook. They, uh, uh, Robbie, won't, uh, tell us again, what did Daniel get an award for? Safety. Oh, okay. yeah. The activity award from the Piper Police Department, so we want to recognize him today. Yes. Daniel Fields. So. And it, it's probably, probably be in the paper. Um, any others uh, today? I lost five pounds. Oh. Well, <laughs> I have All right. That's too funny. I have one. I just want to say yesterday we spent time in uh, northern Kentucky helping uh, Jared and Allison uh, move into their new home. Uh, you know, Adam and Samantha did it about a month ago, and then Jared and Allison. And so we j it's just what a blessing it is to see them starting their lives out together in the new home. So they're blessed and we're thankful. Yes. 
And I think it's very appropriate for us to give God thanks for the good things that happens in our life. Uh, some people uh, want to be humble and understand, but at the same time, uh, if all we do is talk about the problems, uh, others may think, well, you know, I don't know about this uh, being a Christian thing. But when we realize the many blessings that God has given us, and, and uh, I think about the answered prayers and all the things that God has done, and if God has blessed you, uh, as a congregation, the Bible says rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those that weep. And so we want to rejoice with you, and I think it's, it's a proper thing to do.
It's okay. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, today's scripture reading is from John chapter 1, verse 29, starting with 29. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I did not know him but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day, John stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus, as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned, and seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, when translated teacher where are you staying he said to them come and see they came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day now it was about the tenth hour one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew Simon Peter's brother he was found his own brother Simon and said to him we have found the Messiah which is translated the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone.
Sunday, oh come Sunday, that's the day Lord, dear Lord above God Almighty, God of love Please look down and see my people through. I believe that God put sun and moon up in the sky. I don't mind the gray skies cause they're just clouds passing see my people through. I believe God is now, was then, and always will be. With God's blessing, we can make it Scripture text is taken from 1 Corinthians, first chapter. Paul, called as an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, saints by calling, with all who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given you in Christ Jesus, that in everything you are enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony concerning Christ was confirmed in you, so that you are not lacking in any gift, awaiting eagerly the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall also confirm you to the end, blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, through whom you were called into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gifts you have given each of us, and help us to discern them, Father, and utilize them in our community and in our church and be with our pastor as he opens the scripture to us to tell us more about those gifts. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Uh, Somos del Señor, which is translated, We Are the Lord's, uh, which goes along with our theme that we're beginning a, a series in the book of Corinthians. So we'll be in the next four or five weeks or so in the book of Corinthians, Lord willing, with the theme, We Belong to Christ. We Belong to Christ. And today our title of this, of course, uh, is uh, You Are Not Lacking. Uh, there's a story, a kind of a funny story I read, uh, about a lady who uh, was in traffic, and she was behind this guy. She didn't feel like he was going fast enough and moving fast enough at the stoplights. And he was trying to obey the traffic laws and, 
Uh, so uh, sometimes, you know, some of us, when we get to the, the light turns yellow, we think that means speed up, uh, you know, and, and so, but this fellow, he slowed down and stopped like he was supposed to and started when he was supposed to. This, this woman was just furious. She was blowing a horn and uh, cussing and screaming at him and, and uh, really upset. And uh, it was causing her to drive erratic and just be, uh, you know, irrational. And finally, she's at this uh, stop sign behind this guy. And a guy picks on the window. She looks out, and it's an officer. And he tells her to get out of the car and put her hands up. And he uh, handcuffs her, puts her in the squad car, and takes her to jail. And he's sitting there, and as, as she's sitting there in jail, finally the arresting officer comes out, unhandcuffs her, and he says, I, I have to apologize. I thought, you, you, when I saw you, uh, I, I, I looked on your car, and you had a uh, What Would Jesus Do bumper sticker on the back of your car. You had a uh, Honk If You Love Jesus bumper, bumper sticker on your car. You had a... Uh, right for life sticker on your car and an ichthus, a fish, uh, representing the Christian, and I just assumed that the car was stolen. <laughs> well, sometimes we fail to live up to our potential and to the way that we're supposed to live in Christ. You know, there is this expectation of others that Christians are going to act like Christians. We don't always do that. But when we don't, it presents a picture that doesn't look good on the church. And uh, so, uh, with that in mind, we're thinking about the Corinthian church. Uh, the Corinthian church was a church that uh, had problems. They had a lot of problems in, in the church. And they, uh, Paul begins in this letter to remind them of their position and their calling, and yet they aren't really measuring up to that. And I think it's interesting, and if you have your Bibles, uh, today we're going to use our Bibles a little bit. So it's going to be in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, and we are really just in the salutation, the first nine verses, and I hope you don't mind, but you really could do a series just on the salutation. And so Paul opens the letter as a traditional Pauline style and uh, talking about his um, credentials. Paul called him to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. And so he is uh, an apostle and he's speaking with some authority here. It's not just some Joe off the street. He is an apostle. And so uh, they have a reason to listen to him. And then he mentions uh, Sothenes, our brother. Now, why did he mention Sothenes? Uh, who is Sothenes? After all, uh, we don't know a whole lot. We really don't know much at all about Sothenes. It doesn't really tell us much. He doesn't go in. But it was important enough for him to mention it in the text and in his letter. And Sothenes, uh, the only place that, that we know of that he's mentioned is in Acts 18, 17. Uh, he was possibly the ruler of the synagogue. And he had been beaten and, uh, because of a mob felt like they weren't getting what they wanted. Uh, and also, if this is the same guy, he became a believer, probably under Paul's ministry. And so what you have here is a fellow who was a very prominent ruler, some loved and some hated, no doubt, who became a believer in Christ and his life was changed. And so Paul, in a way, is, is telling them about, number one, I've got a brother here and we're, we're greeting you, but also I want you to see the power of God to be able to change lives. So he begins the letter right off talking about the power of God. Now, to the church of God, the church of God. So he, he addresses them as, as the church of God which is at Corinth. And so the Corinthians, the church at Corinth. And then he says this, to them that are sanctified. The word sanctified means to set apart, to be set apart for holy use. Anytime something has been sanctified, uh, you know, if you go to someone's house and, 
and you know you you know mom used to have certain dishes that she would say you can't use that dish that's only for special guests you know those were in a sense sanctified they were set apart for special use and then when we have communion uh, we use the the bread and the juice it's sanctified because it's set apart for a special use you and I are sanctified now we may not feel sanctified but we are sanctified because God has set us apart for His use. And that's the true of the church in Corinth as well. And He says to them that are sanctified in Christ, and then called to be saints, the special heavenly high calling for each and every one of us. I know that there are people that are uh, inducted into sainthood in, uh, in some organizations such as the, the Roman Catholic Church. And you have to go through a very uh, strict uh, set of of circumstances and be ordained or appointed as a saint. But actually the Bible says we are saints. You are a saint and I'm a saint. And sometimes we'll say, well, I'm no saint. Well, yes, you are. If you're a Christian, you are a saint. Now, you may not act like a saint, but still you're a saint. With all that in every place is called upon the name of Jesus our Lord. And so together we're saints. Grace be unto you, and peace from God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, uh, he begins by giving thanks on their behalf. And I love the way that he does this. Rather than attacking them for the problems that they have, he begins to talk about the good things about them first. Recently, we were in a, a, a meeting uh, for boosters for parents, really, at school, and we were sitting around talking, and it was really about trying to raise funds for them to go on their trip and all that. When all of a sudden it turned into kind of a bashing session where they were only bashing the director, and uh, it went from one to the other, and it just kept growing. And finally, uh, you know, Sandy tried to uh, uh, change the subject a couple of times. And they talked about getting with this person, and, you know, we're not the person that hires them or fires them, but. Uh, they, they wanted to get with this person and actually let them have it, you know, their gripes. And I said, you know what? Uh, you know, it's fine to give constructive criticism sometimes. But we also want to make sure that we're not just tearing somebody down, that we're also talking about the good things they're doing. And they have done some wonderful things. And then it kind of changed the mood of, of the group. Because sometimes what happens is we get in this mob mentality where we just want to attack somebody. And, and we just jump on that, that thing. And so Paul begins by saying the good things. Now, we are called to be saints. We're called by God. We're sanctified in all those things. But he also does address the problems in the church. This was a church with problems. And uh, he's going to address those problems, and we're, we're looking at some of those. So, what were the problems in the Corinthian church? Well, first let's talk about what the problems were not. Not sure what's going on. <laughs> the problems, for, what, what, what were the problems and what were the, not the problems? Am I doing something wrong here? All right. First of all, the, the problems were not lack of resources. They weren't lack of resources. They were endowed with a lot of resources in the Corinthian church. Uh, the church of Corinthian, of course, was in the city of Corinth, which, which was a seaport. And many, many merchants came by and came through there, and they were in the area of the Aegean Sea, and so, as people were traveling through Greece and different places, they would come through this seaport and they would trade. And so, they had a lot of commerce in this city. They had a theater in the city that seated, an, an amphitheater that seated like 20,000 people. They had uh, Oriental. They had people from all over the country, all over the world. Including uh, Greek, uh, Oriental, all, just all over the world. So they were very, very uh, kind of a metropolitan place. 
and very well off. Now they had some problems too. It was a, also where the, the temple of Aphrodite and all those things. And so uh, we, we know some of those those issues there that come with with success, also uh, temptation. But the problem was not lack of resources. They had they had the resources. Uh, also, the problem was not lack of ability. The church was not doing what they were supposed to do, but it wasn't because of lack of ability. Because they had been given many spiritual gifts. Uh, he says here in this passage, if you look at verse 7, so that you come behind in no gift. And uh, the conversion that, uh, that we're using today says that you're lacking you are not lacking in anything. And that's the text, uh, the, the title for today. You're lacking in nothing. You are, he's saying you're not lacking in anything because God has given you all these that you back up. Uh, he says in verse 5 that you've been enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. That you are lacking in nothing. They've been given all these spiritual gifts and they're lacking in nothing. And if you turn over uh, to chapter 12, there's a whole section on all the gifts. And we're not going to spend any time today on that. But I just want to mention verse 7 there. Chapter 12, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone to profit with all. In other words, everybody has a spiritual gift. At least one. Most of us have more than one. And I actually uh, have a spiritual gift test, and they are fairly accurate. I took it myself the other day. If you'd be interested in taking it, I'll bring it for you, and you can take it home, and we can uh, let you have it. It would also be great for the uh, PPR to have so that we know who, who can do what. But uh, what is your spiritual gift? Have you discovered what your talents and gifts are? Some of us are better at some things than others, right? I mean, uh, some of us cannot sing like John. We can't go from high to low like that. It would be a scary thing, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so we understand that. Not all of us are good at organization. Not all of us are good at communication. Not all of us are good at teaching. But we have something that we can offer. Something that's a gift from God that we can that we can give. And I think it's beautiful to watch the body of Christ on Sunday morning and just be in action. And I think when I watch Adam and Samantha up here with the children and people using their different gifts, even people reading and singing and uh, all these things, it's just a beautiful thing. And that's what really he's talking about here. The problem was not a lack of resources. And it wasn't a lack of ability because they had been given all the gifts that they needed to get the job done. Also, it wasn't a problem with the lack of education. People were probably very educated uh, in this city. And uh, so that was not an issue either. He said, you've been enriched, in verse 5, in all utterance, in all knowledge. Education not a problem here wasn't a problem of resources or ability or education. So what was the problem? Well, the problem was, in, in a simple way to say it, was division. It was a divided church. Kind of like the divided Methodist church. You know, they, they were a church that were divided very much. And, uh, and so Paul is saying, some, going to address some of these issues. But it's these things that are causing them to have division. You can see that you know, as we go past the text a little bit. But and he talks about in verse 12, some of you say, I'm of a Paul and Apollos, and I'm of Cephas and Christ. Is Christ divided? And so basically there's personality contests and, and uh, conflicts going on in the church where some people were siding with one group, and you had these cliques going on. And some say, I, I'm, I'm a Paul follower. And some, another one says, well, I, I'm a Cephas follower. 
And what happens in the church sometimes is you'll have these people that will, will almost begin to cause issues in the church just with what James said was the fiery tongue. The fiery tongue. Because he said the tongue cannot be mastered and it can set on fire, you know, just like a fire in, in the woods. And it is set on fire by hell. It comes from Satan. It comes from an evil place. When you see somebody that is never happy with anything in the church, they're always complaining, mark those people and try to avoid them as much as you possibly because they are not coming from a good place. Now, most of the stuff I've seen happen, the problems I've seen in churches, and I've pastored now almost 40 years, and I've pastored a lot of different churches, including different denominations. And most of the time when people have come in with problems to the pastor, and there's been conflict in the church, it's usually not because the pastor's preaching false doctrine. It's usually not because he's running around and doing something like that. It's usually petty stuff. It's usually, you will be surprised at the conflicts that I've that's seen in churches. You just look it up sometime uh, over silly things. But people will look for those things. Those kind of people will look for something, and they will call, that's what was going on here. That was exactly the problem in the church. <coughs> um, so the, the truth of the matter is in order for a church to really work, you have to work together as a team. <coughs> I, I, I'm thankful to be in a church where, you know, it doesn't mean that we always have to agree with one another. We don't always agree. But what it means is that we work together for a common goal because we're all in this same team together. And I'm thankful to be in a church where I feel like I don't have to dread going to a board meeting. Where I can uh, even have a disagreement with somebody and still feel like I'm not going to be attacked. I'm, I'm thankful for it because I've been in places where that wasn't the case. And so as we think about it, what needs to happen in order for us to be that kind of church? And, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about the other day, you know, the fact that in 1969 that we put a man on the moon. And that was an amazing thing. And that guy got a lot of credit. And all he did was step out off of a step, one giant leap, you know, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. He didn't do a whole lot, to be honest with you. It was the people at NASA and the people that did all the work behind that to get them to where they are that really did the work. In fact, some of those people are just now starting to be recognized, such as African-American women. If you've seen the movie, I don't remember the name of the movie. Hidden but figures. But Hidden Figures. Hidden Figures. Thank you. But it, it brought out the fact that there were people instrumental in getting them to the moon who were never recognized. But yet, in the background, they were the people that got it done. And in the church today, there's all kinds of people. And I'm thankful today for people uh, like, like Andy uh, Swanson, uh, who, who, wants, who does it, and he probably wouldn't want me to bring up his name today, but he wants to remain in the background, but he does a lot of things in the background that we don't even recognize sometimes. But if I were to ask him to come up here and speak today, he would probably walk out the door, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> because that is not... What he, it, that's not his gift. Now he's a great writer, you know, but getting up in front of people. And so all I'm saying today is we learn to find those gifts and we do those things, but it takes a team to work together. And I, I was, uh, you know, just like Tina reading the passage of scripture today and uh, Melinda. I, I, I think that's a wonderful thing. To watch the body of Christ. And I asked Tina and Melinda and both said yes. And Tina said, I want to get more involved. I want to do what I can. That's what a pastor loves to hear. Because the body of Christ working together can get great things done. You know, the, the hospital has a theme now, a kind of a running theme, that together we rise. And regardless of what you may think about the hospital, whatever, it's a true statement. The old saying that, you know, united, we can stand, but divided what? We fall. It's true of a church, too. 
It really is true of a church. So what does it take to get through these petty things? Well, the answer, I think, is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. If you, if you don't mind, you can turn there. <coughs> 1 Corinthians 13. Paul says here, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity or love, I become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. None of these things matter if we don't love. And you know what will squall troublemakers? You know what will squall the problems in, that will calm the troubles in the church? Love. You just get the love of Jesus in your heart. You get, you get maybe some people in the church just need to get saved. <laughs> you know, they just, I, you know, uh, just, just get Jesus. Because if you get Jesus in your heart, there's something about it that just makes you want. The old song says, makes me love everybody. Give me that old-time religion. Nothing will take the place of a relationship with God. And nothing can make a church run like it's supposed to. Now, are we all going to agree? No. We're not going to all agree. Uh, you know, I, I look at, at the way... You know, Congress is, is doing business these days, and it seems like it's all politicized. And, and, you know, all they're doing is, you know, you got one group who hates another group, and all they're doing is trying to, uh, to get that group out, and, and nothing's being accomplished. Why? Because they're not working together. And I have found that in the church, there are times that there's people in the church you may not even like. Maybe their personality rubs you the wrong way or whatever. And that's true of jobs, too, by the way. But what you do is you realize you have a common goal. And you serve the same God. And Jesus Christ died for both of us. And we're going to work together to get something accomplished for the Lord. Love, love is what it takes to get this job done. And so I pray today that we would all find that, uh, that place in our hearts where we can fall in love with Jesus and love each other, even if we don't always agree with each other. I want to ask the musicians to come this morning. The invitation is always open here, whether we mention it or not. Sometimes we, we do and sometimes we don't. But the invitation to come up, you can come up here and pray right here at this altar, or you can pray wherever you are. But it's really about a commitment. Once you begin to love, then it's about a commitment. And so as we begin this year out, I'm going to ask you to make a commitment. Last week, we, we talked about the commitments that we make when we become a member of the church or when we uh, take our baptismal vows. We make commitments. And I want to ask you to commit to God, first of all. Not necessarily to the church, but to God. And then, God asks us to worship Him, and I'm going to ask you to commit to church, your church attendance this year. Yeah? And that's part of being a Christian. Commit to being the best Christian, and then commit to wherever God will lead you. That's what you want to do.